People love our onion rings. We're gonna make onion rings today. We're gonna be using um, in our batter milk, cracker meal, flour, and then some simple seasonings. And then there's, this is gonna be a multi-step process of going from wet to dry, wet back to dry, and then finally done. Um, so we just have to kind of set up each of the stations before we get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is have a bowl of flour, and then we're just gonna throw some salt in it. We're gonna add some pepper. This is just all officially just to, you know, kind of, if you're wondering how much we're putting in, just, just enough to, uh, you know, coat the top. Final thing that we're gonna add to the flour mixture is some sugar. So today we're using uh, Vidalia sweet onions. So we'll just mix this together. The next thing that we're gonna do is make the wet mixture, pull out, you know, pour out some milk, and then we're gonna add one egg to it. And then so now I'm just mixing, but the final step is we're gonna add cracker meal. So this is kind of my experience with frying, this is kind of an unusual ingredient is you might use panko, you might you know throw in beer into that if you're doing beer batter, but this adds a really nice crunch and it provides a very nice like even, even crust to the onion ring when you fry it. So I'll just, you know, I pour out half the bag and then that's that for that final step. And then so I'll just walk through all these ingredients that we have again. Um, we have the wet mixture with milk and egg and then we have the flour with the salt, pepper, sugar mixed up. And then the final step, the cracker meal. And then, you know, like I mentioned before, we're just using the Vidalia sweet onions. You can use any onion that you like. This is also a seasonal onion. So you might not be able to get these. And then here's a personal preference part. So we have the peeled onions. And this is basically up to you, you know, if you like thinner onion rings, thicker ones. Um, I kind of just cut them up and then you just kind of get a good mixture of, you know, thin and thick ones. But you also don't want them too thin just so they don't necessarily you know, like fall apart when you're trying to batter them. But I'll probably, for this onion, just go straight down the middle and then you, know, you can just pop them out. And if they break apart, that's totally fine. All right, so after you, you know, poke out all of your onions, you can see that we have some really, really thick, like end ones. This makes like for a nice onion ring. This is your classic, you know, probably if you're getting them in a restaurant, the majority of them would look like this. All right, so now we're about to make, finally make our onion rings. After we've prepped everything, prepped the onions, we can go ahead and get started. So usually what I do, I throw a couple onions into the milk and then move that around with my left hand. And then we're gonna throw these into the flour mixture first, like to cover it. So if you can, if you're making a larger batch, it's usually a lot easier. You can like shake them around, or if you're in a restaurant and you have a lot more space to work with. But I found this to be the most efficient way if you're making a lot of onion rings for a big party. All right, so once they're coated, I'm gonna go back to the wet mixture of the milk and the egg, and then throw them in there and then just gently like press down just so they're fully submerged. And then, so you can see that they're, they have a nice coating on them. Now I'm gonna take it to the final step and then toss it in the cracker mill with my dry hand. And then once you get the hang of it, you can move to, you know, doing multiple at a time. You can see that has a nice, nice coating. That's what makes these onion rings really special is that, you know, they vary in size, you're hand breading them, and so each one's gonna be a little bit unique and then and different. So if you're making these for a party, you're gonna know the ones that are people's favorites and you can see which ones they eat accordingly. All right, so we're finally done breading the onion rings. And as you can see, there's a good variety of, you know, like breading thickness on some of them, depending on how thick the onion is. And you even see some like clumps of breading. Finally, the last thing that you can do if you have time um, is I like to either refrigerate them or put them in a freezer, throw it in for at least an hour, or from a freezer perspective, you know, do at least 20 minutes. And then um, after some time elapses, through the use of TV magic, 
we'll start frying these. Um, when I have my frying station, I like to have when I'm frying the fryer and then, and then a, a plate with some paper towels just to pick up the extra grease. And then, so what I always recommend is, you know, you don't want to do too many at once at first, just because you always risk of, you know, like dropping the oil temperature too quickly. You know, typically no set time when we're frying them. And then it's also good when you're frying them, like pick them up, give them a good jostle, just so they're not sticking together. In this case, we're only frying four, but the next batch I can fry a lot more together to, to show you how to do that as well. And then another good indicator that they're done is that they're starting to float. So I'd say that this is, this is the, the normal browning that you'd want to see in a restaurant. I'm gonna pull these off. The next batch I might do a little bit darker. So this batch is a little bit bigger just to show you how to, how to do that. So you're not at the fryer all day frying. Slow drop. And then also another tip is maybe you filled it too high and you fill your basket full of too many onion rings. Just pull it up to prevent any bad. So you can see maybe this one's gonna get stuck and just move it out. You can even see when I'm taking these out of the out of the fry basket, like there's just no grease dripping off of them. It's a great recipe to fry anything in for that matter, to make sure that they're not greasy. So you can see we did this batch a little bit darker to compare and contrast from the prior batch. We're not sure what happened to the other two onion rings on the plate. Mm -hmm. Good onion rings seem to get eaten quickly in this house. These are just crispy. That's all these are. They're perfectly crispy. Before we do anything, I'm gonna have one of the onion yeah, rings. Yeah, we gotta try these. Haven't tried them yet. I mean, these look spectacular. If you can't see these yet, they are amazing. I, Andy tried to explain to him, these just don't get soggy. They're perfectly crispy. No, yeah. no grease, no oil. I think it's the cracker mill. That's the Probably. Key. All righty. Cheers. All right, cheers. There we go. Oh yeah, perfect. You can hear, still hear how crunchy they are. The sweetness of the onion. I like, you put a little sugar in the breading. A little bit. Just a little, I can taste just yeah. a little hint I like. These have always been my favorite onion rings. Same, I could eat all three mm. of these baskets. Oh yeah. And probably all three of these big boys too. 